I'm on Shudder. So what I do when I when I finished when we finish recording, I usually stick a film on while I edit. Yeah. So I'm going through. Oh fuck! It just crapped out on me. There we go. So I used, I I've got Shudder up because I was having a look to see what horror film I could stick on, and I'm going through the the all movies section, and I came across a short movie called "He Took His Skin Off for Me." Oh. Okay. And there's, there's just a picture of a skinless dude kissing his missus. Got it. Uh, and the blurb for the film just says, the story of a man who takes his skin off for his girlfriend and why it probably wasn't the best idea. Welcome to Character Unlock episode 63. Whole 63 episodes. Only six more until I can make a stupid joke. What? All of your jokes are stupid jokes. Yes, but this time I get to make one that's uh, overly sexifying. <laughs> uh, so I suppose, as everybody can hear, I am hosting and joining me as always, as always, my good buddy John. You're right, mate. Uh, yeah, I'm good. Yeah? Yeah, I'm good. 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 Mate, I think I'm, I'm on like a record. I think like every fourth podcast, I'm ill. Okay. So, so I've, why yet, is... I've yet why... another goddamn motherfucking cold. Maybe you're just broken internally. It, no, I'm not. What I've got is a fucking idiot child. All childs are idiot. Yes, they are. All children are idiots. But this one thinks it's perfectly acceptable to walk up to me, look at me in my face, and then cough directly into my mouth. <laughs> yes, that is acceptable. And then wonder why I get angry when she doesn't put her hand over her mouth. Is he fucking retard? You've given me a cold already. Stop trying to give me another one. Or give me more of the same one. Stop I don't know. being ill all the time. For fuck's sake. But so what it actually means is, we're usually by this point, because we've chatted before we started recording... And I finished my coffee. Actually, what I've just finished is my lem sip, and now I get to take a sip of my coffee. Ah, I can't taste it because I've got a cold, but it's all good. It it does its job. <laughs> ah, the life of a fucking dad. It's all good fun, mate. Yep, it is all good fun. How have you been? Everything been all right? Yeah, everything's fine. I uh, I found out that I can both get the Gigafast broadband and not get the Gigafast broadband. So you have Schrodinger's one gig broadband. Exactly. That's exactly how it is. Because I've pre-ordered it through Vodafone. Yeah. Uh, I've received the email to say that I can have it. I go to the website and it says that because I'm a, I'm a cust- I'm already a customer, I need to phone them up. Phone them up, go through it. Turns out that they can't fit a date in for my thing. They sent out a couple of uh, like their actual sales team to come visit me specifically to try and go over how to do it. Um, one Wait, of my what? one of my friends' friends also works for Vodafone Gigafast team, so it was him that came around okay. to take a look at like the area because they can't trust the city fiber that are running it. And it turns out that they've. They've done, like, up to ten houses to my left, and then they've done, like, from ten houses to my right. Nice. So there's, like, a gap of, like, 20 houses that there's just not... They've not activated as such. It's like they came they came around, they took a look outside, and they saw the, the road had been completely dug up as per, you know, running fiber cable. Yeah. And the floor grommets been installed specifically for the uh, city fiber stuff to come out right in front of my property. Okay. But they've not turned on us. They've not turned you on? No. No, no they didn't. No porn for you? No, no porn for me. So it's, it's been it's fucking awesome that so far, it's like, considering I got the first email like saying it was in my area in November and to phone <laughs> up to organ, or, order it, yeah. and then it's now almost March. And if I go through the website... It says, congratulations, Gigafast is available. <laughs> <And> follow <laughs> it up, and it's not. 
It's fucking wow. brilliant. I'm almost glad that when I discovered that Vodafone were doing the one gig, I discovered I'm under quite a substantial contract still with Sky. Yeah. And I didn't bother. Wow. Because eventually Sky will get it. Yeah. Well, I think... I don't know. Sky would need to then make a deal with City Fiber because at the moment I think they're currently deal with OpenReach and OpenReach yeah, dicks. The, the thing is, right, because we had this when I first moved into onto the estate I live on now. Yeah. Because so, we were on, we weren't even on copper. We were on basically little bits of string with hamsters on the end. Some tinfoil. Yeah, it was. A bit it, of cigarette paper would be quicker. Mate, genuinely, it was ghastly. Like when I first moved in there, I had like five meg internet. Yeah. You know, I didn't move in here twenty years ago. I've lived in this house for six years. Five meg internet six years ago was fucking abysmal. So when we got uh, fiber, and this is. It's half the reason I fucking hate most of the people who live on this estate. Everybody was shouting from the rooftops, hey, quick, go to BT, because BT are the only people that are going to have fibre. The man from Openreach said, only BT are going to have it. I phoned up Sky, I went, can you just let me know when the monopoly's up on BT, please, so I can come to you for my fibre? The woman went, the fuck are you on about? We'll give you fibre now. Shit, yes, yeah, son. I'll have <laughs> fibre max, please. So, uh, yeah. I don't suppose for a second there'll be that big a delay once uh, the one gig... Because the one gig in my area is literally just down the hill. Yeah. And it's working its way up. So I don't suppose it'll be that long before it's up here. And I don't suppose it'll be that long before I can get it on Sky. I'll stick with Sky. Uh, don't, don't you worry your, uh, your pretty head about the fact that they're running these uh, new cables because they're digging the roads up and they're like shutting down pathways and shit so they can run the... the the fiber to the properties as opposed to just to the green cabs nice um so you're gonna end up that facebook group that you're not part of anymore is just gonna be filled with people whining about the fact that they can't like get their car off their drive because they wanted to go to work at like 10 in the morning instead of normal business hours yeah and they they can't because they've dug up the floor in front of them good they're all cunts (laughs) yeah so I'm annoyed that I'm not getting the gigafast broadband that I've got, but eh. I mean, it's what I've got at the moment. My 80 meg broadband is fine for streaming and playing Xbox and gaming on, and it's not yeah. so bad. But you know, I want to be able to download everything all the time forever. <laughs> it's a pain when you've gone to them specifically because they're doing the one gig in your area, and then yeah. you can't have it. Yeah. I know, I've been a Vodafone well. customer for like nearly two years now because of, that was it was back when they announced they were going to do Gigafast and Keynes. I was like, okay, yep, yeah, jump on that bandwagon. Because it's like one of the reasons to why I went to I try to organise because Vo, um, Virgin are moving around Milton Keynes again. Okay. Now that um, the monopoly is completely gone in Milton Keynes for um, open reach yeah. installations, because that's why City Fiber are coming around doing it. Is that Vodafone are going around and laying cable as well now? Well, the, not Vir- Virgin are going to start laying cable in Milton Keynes as well. So you could probably get the Vivid 200, as they call it. But then there's the other Vivid 200 gaming that they have, which is basically the exact same thing, only they don't fuck up with your ping. <laughs> Fair enough. Seriously, the, the only difference I can see is that you pay an extra like £20 a month just that so you have a better ping. No, I'm all right. And I think they they make it so that your upload speed's also slightly better, rather than capping your upload. I think I think I'll be fine. I, I, I'm sure I'll be fine. I yeah. don't game online that much anyway. No. The last time I get well, no, not the last time, but the time before I gamed online with somebody, it wasn't my uh, game that was crapping out all the time. <laughs> True. <laughs> oh, it was fucking weird why I was doing that. Actually, I think I might have diagnosed the problem. I uh, run a factory reset on my router um, okay. like six months ago. Yeah. Forgot to do all of the port forwarding and stuff. Nice. So I, it's just something that I kind of... It's been sitting in the back of my mind for fucking ages where if I'm playing a game that doesn't persistently sit online yeah. and doesn't constantly isn't like checking constantly... So, for instance, while I've been playing FIFA, uh, if I do squad battles instead of actual competitive online, yeah, I'll get disconnected from the EA servers. So, 
if I'm playing if I'm playing like career mode, I'll go back I'll pause the game at some point in like the fifty, seventieth minute, or I'll go back to the after a match and it'll come up saying you've lost connection to the EA servers. Press the right stick to connect back up again to continue to receive rewards and complete challenges and stuff. Yeah. You know, the typical offline, online stuff that you get with EA games. Yeah. But I could be playing Battlefield all day and it'd be fine. If I'm so if I'm playing FIFA and then playing squad battles, if you're on Ultimate Team, if you lose connection to the EA servers, then you get booted out of Ultimate Team completely. Okay. Even if, even if you're mid match. So it's really it was really annoying because it was doing it. And then it was like every so often I'd have to restart my console or restart the router or a combination of the two. And then it would work for the rest of the day and it'd be fine. Okay. And then since I sorted out my router like a week and a half ago, it's been fine. Absolutely. Just like hands down easy. Just yeah. Completely and absolutely okay. So I'm thinking it was just that I had the port forward and configured wrong. Oh, fair enough. Or rather not configured at all. Yeah. That was fun, discovering that, remembering that I did that. <laughs> but it's just the things like that, you shouldn't have to fucking do it. I know it improves experience by doing it, but you shouldn't have to do it. No, you shouldn't. Uh, and it, it, it's kind of, it's that thing, though, isn't it? You, when you want to talk about, oh, everyone's got internet, and everyone's got great internet, so, you know, always online is not a problem. Well, I actually know. Because even a big city like ours, the infrastructure is only okay at best. And even then, if you get a, a dodgy uh, ISP or a dodgy router, or you know, if you don't know what you're doing, you could be well and truly screwed. Yeah. Oh, that's the thing. Is that imagine if I was sat here and I didn't know that I'd completely fucked up my port forwarding or just not done it in general. Yeah. If uh, if there's like some um, someone else like down the street or my grand for instance and they were just like getting constant brownouts with whenever they were doing anything, so it's like it's like not like the the internet was just shit every so often. It's just like out out of nowhere, it just do a quick oh you've been disconnected, you're reconnected immediately afterwards. Because it was doing on Hitman as well. I was playing Hitman one, and it was just out of nowhere. It'd say you've you can't save to the ubisoft cloud yeah retry and then i'd hit retry and it'd be fine nice it's just like but but it was a similar thing like that to what it was on fifa because i wasn't persistently playing online it just like out of nowhere it just go okay yeah we're not connected to the server so bam we're not gonna save the game for you right now and or we'll boot you back to the menu for no reason yeah as as games do but that's the difference between a persistent online multiplayer game like Battlefield, where yeah. it was absolutely fine all day. Yeah. And I think that's what was causing my issues with the division, probably. Fair enough. Just like it wasn't connecting me back to the server properly. You can try again this weekend. Another beta this weekend. I could, but I'm not going to. No, I'm not either. <laughs> didn't, didn't I didn't like it that much. It's like oh, no, ha- having a good experience or not, I didn't enjoy playing the game and playing with you didn't necessarily it didn't actually make it that much better as playing with friends does thanks well, it was cons- <laughs> yeah, take it as the backhanded insult that it was supposed to be <laughs> no, no, it wasn't a fun game it, it, it was pap it was more, just exact. They could have just re-released the first one and put a different skin on the city, and it would have been. The, it would have been that game. Yep. So uh, yeah, I did. I no. I, I, Division is nowhere near my list of things to play ever again. Uh, but saying that, I've said that about other games as well, and I ended up playing at least one of them this week. So, which I didn't expect to be doing. You have a habit of playing Ubisoft games about six months after they release, anyway. True. Uh, I'll tell you what then, before we talk about games, should, there's a, even though we said last fucking episode we weren't going to bother doing new stuff anymore, there's actual new stuff worth talking about. So, I think we need to talk about new stuff, mate. Yeah, news when there's news, otherwise there's no news to not news. Pretty much at the blue, uh, a couple of days ago, good old Reggie's announced he's retiring. Yeah. Dude. Well. He's probably made a fucking lot of money. Oh, he has. Have you seen the companies that dude's work for? 
he that dude has made some fucking money. Uh, yeah. No two ways about it. But yeah, Reggie was it Phil Emmy? Phil Emmy? Phil Emmy? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, the head of marketing for for Nintendo. Yeah. Uh, you know the my body is ready guy. The <laughs> poor fucker. You know invented the meme that's going to piss him off for the rest of his life. Yep. Uh, but yeah, he's retiring. Uh, is going to be working for Nintendo no more. I was off to spend time with his family. You know what? I I can't think of anybody, or I can't think of many people uh, in the gaming industry that deserve it more than him. That dude works hard, but he's not a cunt. Yeah. You know, and it's Nintendo, man. Me and Nintendo don't see eye to eye on much. Me and Reggie don't see eye to eye on much. But yeah, uh, I think that dude is proper cool. I have a lot of time for it for him. I, I hope he enjoys it. Yeah, I mean, it'll be great. I mean, it's not great that he's uh, he's retiring, but he's been doing it for a fairly long time. Yeah, he's deserving of a break, and I think that that's all this is. If I'm honest, I think his retirement is just going to be a very extended leave of absence. Oh, yeah. he's he's going to get brought back into the fold at some point somewhere for and it'll be a lot of money and it'll be a company that really needs a new face uh, to be fair i he will probably be kept on as a you know outside consultant uh nintendo, in, uh, nintendo in, america and yeah in a way it's because he knows his shit the the dude uh, i want to say he's a marketing genius cuz he kind of is but also the Wii U, so that you know there are problems there. It doesn't matter how much marketing you have; you can't make the Wii U a good thing. No, you can't. Uh, it the Wii U was console by committee. There was, you know, it wasn't all his fault, but a big part of it was him. Uh, but I will not. I refuse to be negative about him. That dude is awesome, and I hope he enjoys his retirement. Uh, he's fucking badass. Uh, his replacement is called Bowser, <laughs> which is just fucking brilliant. I, I'm i convinced, actually, that the only reason Reggie is retiring is because he saw the next guy in line was called Bowser and went, I can't stand in this guy's way. I, I, can't, I can't stand in this guy's way. I need to move yeah. aside. <laughs> I just, I thought it was fucking great. But, yeah... It's uh, yeah. I hope I hope he enjoys his time off. Yeah, I mean, it's a good. He's a good marketer. He is the staple to Nintendo Direct. Yeah. And there's there's no one much more iconic than Reggie in well in Nintendo. Just like. F- in terms of what he has done for Nintendo, he's brought so many people to watching everything that's come out of Nintendo Direct for the past, what, five years plus? Yeah. I can't remember a time before, Reggie, to be fair. Uh, I can't remember. I think he's been at 15 years. I think he's been at Nintendo for 15 years. Yeah. So, more than half of your life. Yep. Yeah. Pre internet. <laughs> Almost. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, he's he will be missed and hopefully his replacement can do as good a job. But with a name like Bowser you kinda have to take a bit of flack. Well, I mean he has been he's he's done a couple of the the Nintendo E3 things. He's been around for a little while. So, you know, it's not like he's an unknown. So, I think he'll be all right. I think he'll be fine. And Nintendo fans tend to n- not be as arsehole <laughs> towards their executives as, yeah. uh, as maybe Xbox and Sony fans are. We'll see. It Bowser's in for a tough ride, but I think he's, he'll do all right. Doug uh, Bowser. Doug Bowser, yeah. 
What else was there? Oh, so, yeah, talking Xbox. Uh, apparently, we're going to see the the first glimpses of new Xboxes yep. at E three this year. Yeah. So, um, what was it? Phil Spencer. Yeah. Um, what was it? interview PC gamer? Was it? I think it was. Yeah. So, um, talking about how they're going to try and fix the Xbox on Windows ten. Um, the store itself and then there's um, well just the beginning of Xbox future yeah or next box yeah so they haven't announced a, uh, a proper name for them yet so they're go- there's going to be two uh, by all reports so I've got to make sure I get this right there's Anaconda and Lockhart so, obviously, the project names. Yeah. Or code names, if you like. So, Anaconda is going to be the Xbox One X equivalent. So, it's going to be the more powerful console. Uh, and then Lockhart is going to be the diskless one. It's going to be basically a streaming machine and use X Cloud. Yeah. Uh, but that's literally all we know. There's there's no other information about it. Uh, we'd have to wait till was it June and it for E3. Yeah. So there's the also the the hint towards the integrated Xbox Windows platform for the future, which could be a instead of just being a published once buy once experience, we could see it and end up seeing a develop once for Xbox stroke PC Windows platforms. Yeah. So we could end up with. Uh, uh, the ability to play PC games like the Play Anywhere titles for the Xbox on the other way around, for instance. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. If it means that I can buy a, a PC-ish or PC-focused games like the future of Football Manager yeah. and play it on my Xbox, I'm happy. Fair enough. Because I can't... I've, there's one thing I've wanted on console for such a long fucking time and that's to be able to play Football Manager. Yeah, I don't know why I'm so obsessed with wanting Football Manager on console when I've got a PC that's capable of running it. Can you play it on your Switch? Yep. Actually, it's one of the reasons to why uh, one of the things that I did. I bought Football Manager on Switch, played about four or five seasons on it, yeah. and then bought bought it on PC. Fair enough. <laughs> why wouldn't you? Exactly. So if if there was a play anywhere option in the reverse from Xbox to PC yeah. of being PC to Xbox I'd be very happy. But it's probably almost never going to happen anytime soon. Well, a couple of months we'll, we might find out. You know, I'd guarantee you what happens is we Phil Spencer turns up in a nice crackdown t-shirt and Start spouting stuff about the new Xbox, and then the entire internet goes up in arms about it because someone wasn't happy that about something he said, and then they change all their minds, and then we just get another console. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. We'll find out in uh, in a couple of months, I suppose. Last bit of news. It, I'm gonna have to let you lead with last bit of news, mate, because I know nothing. There's a new Pokemon game coming. Yep. At 2 Come. p.m. UK time, I think it was okay. today. Um, Pokemon had uh, themselves a little Pokemon Direct. So the Pokemon company and Game Freak, uh, the guys that make Pokemon games, funnily enough, uh, pitched out a seven-minute video on the future of Pokemon on Switch, and it's games titled Pokemon Shield and Pokemon Sword. Okay. Um, It's set in a new region called the Galore region. Um, and it's the typical three starters of one fire type, which is a bunny, uh, a grass type, which is a monkey, and a water type, which is a weird little lizard seal thing. Uh, yep. Okay. Um, that's pretty much all we've seen in terms of actual Pokemon. Um, they put on a very nice video of uh, not actual game footage to introduce the Pokemon. Of course. And then they showed off some actual in-game footage of what it's going to look like, and it's moving more into the 
uh, anime dead eyes situation where the character is literally just standing there staring at you with a weird creepy smile on their face regardless of what's going on around them oh goody sign me up but that's been a staple of pokemon games since they've introduced the (laughs) actual player faces into the models which has always been a bit fucking weird it's like you could see like the most ridiculous and terrifying thing happening like a massive meteor shower yeah and a dragon coming out of uh out of the sky, and he's just your character just standing there with a weird, creepy smile on his face, staring blankly while everyone else is panicking. All right. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> uh, from what we've seen so far, it kind of looks like we're moving back away from um, the sun and moon uh, situation with uh, the Pokemon sis- uh, the Pokemon gyms not being gyms. So instead of being battle based, it was challenge based. I think we're moving back to battling again. Okay. Uh, and at the end, they announced that there's going to be more Pokemon coming in the near future, not just these two games coming by the end of the year. I think it was they said, looking wow. at end of year 2019. Wow. Okay. Well, with the content they've shown off so far, it would it was uh it was not so bad. Fair enough. So will you be buying it? Uh, undecided. Depends on how Lee is with it, because Lee is the only Pokemon buddy I've got. Okay. <laughs> uh, he's not t- particularly sold so far. Fair enough. I no, I won't be buying it. <laughs> Even though currently I'm struggling to justify owning a Switch because I haven't played it myself for fucking ages. I kind of gathered that's what you were going to do. Well, I It still gets used, just not by me. So, we'll see. Uh, I will probably use it because I've bought a couple of Resi games for it. I will probably use it in a couple of weeks on, uh, on a work thing in London for a week. So it'll be travelling to and from London for a week. So... Plenty of time to play Switch or play Switch for 20 minutes and then get in the wood and read my book. But we'll see. Uh, I think that's everything, isn't it, isn't it mate? Unless you've got unless you know, any other newsy type things we need to talk about. I don't think there's any more news. That I've uh, Detective Pikachu is coming out soon. No. That's kind of loosely game related. And Pokemon related. Yeah. I saw a a teaser trailer for it the other day. Uh, I saw. I was at the Lego Movie. Yeah. And they had that... a, the, the teaser trailer for it, and it did make me laugh. And at the same time, I was like, I'm still not going to watch it because it's a Pokemon movie. Yeah. I don't care that Ryan Reynolds is in it. It's a Pokemon movie. <laughs> it's a strange one. I don't. I don't know what where this really fits like at all I'm not sure who it's for I'm not sure why it's a thing but But it's for Pokemon fans who aren't children and also love Deadpool but not Deadpool so much that they would rather watch a Pokemon film rather than a Deadpool film Uh, okay (laughs) it's just people who like Pokemon and Ryan Reynolds fair enough (laughs) I mean you fit half of that well yeah I like Ryan Reynolds I like Deadpool. I like Ryan Reynolds and I like Pokemon, so I kind of—I guess I'm the target. I guess so. And I will wait until you see it to decide. Well, no. So here's the problem: uh, my child knows what a Pikachu is. So when she saw a Pikachu in a Sherlock Holmes hat, she got really fucking excited. And I'm probably going to have to go and watch Detective Pikachu. I think you'll love it. I think it'll be your film of the year. Is it out in the summer? Uh, maybe. I might send Maya to go watch it with her so I don't have to. <laughs> uh, this is the beauty of not being the one that has the entire fucking summer holiday off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. New stuff done. Let's talk about some games, buddy. I've had another couple of weeks where I seem to have played loads. 
I I finished nothing. Yeah, I can agree with that. I've I've played a fair amount. Uh, it comes out in May. God damn way. it! Please be May half term at least. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the first week of May. Uh, no way is that May half term. No, because no, probably the Easter, the Easter holidays ends the week of Alien Day. So I was going to say the Easter holidays are what um, almost pretty much end of April. Yeah, well, middle of April, middle of April, month and end of April. About a month and a half from now, isn't it? Yeah, it's the pancake down Tuesday. Yeah. yeah, everybody loves pancakes. I do like pancakes. Anyways, games. <laughs> what have you been playing, mate? I'll let you go first. Okay, so I will start with the obvious one from what I've played. I'll let you let you try and guess. Uh, is it that weird? anime sex game advert that I keep getting on my totally not porn filled browser <laughs> uh, close very close <laughs> so... <laughs> I've played Anthem pretty much exclusively this weekend Okay. so since Friday um, and which pretty would, much which would be the weekend so yeah, yeah. So, but I suppose from last Friday when I got the 10 hour trial yep uh, and I played the first mission to unlock the ability to play co-op multiplayer online. Right. Uh, and then I just sort of left it for a couple of days until one of my mates was actually uh, not at work. Okay. <laughs> or my mate with the AI access was not at work. And then he played that first mission and a half to two missions worth of uh, single player before you unlock the, the online and then we played, me and him just sort of played a little bit of uh, free play, just moseyed about a little bit, did some contracts. And then over the course of the weekend, uh, me and uh, the Josh, who you've met and is going to EGX, uh, buddy, another buddy of mine, Ben, and Lee played a lot, and Danny as well, actually, played a lot of uh, Anthem over the course of the weekend. So trying to fit five people with four in a four-person game it was quite interesting. Luckily, not all of us have been online all the time. <laughs> okay. Um, Anthem's an interesting kettle of fish, with it being that there's a critical path of actual story missions, yeah. and the rest is just, this is you just playing around and you can do whatever you like. It's not really doesn't really benefit the story, doesn't negate from the story. It's just stuff to do. Okay. Uh, so played around a lot of that. It was, we usually just play our own-ish stories as we go around and pick up more missions by walking around Fort Tarsis, the the tower equivalent for this one, the, the hub area. Nice. You got a whole three and a half minutes before you made a Destiny comparison. Well, yeah, I, to be fair, <laughs> Destiny is the comparison, and it's more fun than Destiny. Okay. Hands down more fun. It's got a lot of features better than Destiny, but at the same time it's got a fair few features that it's not learnt from Destiny. But more on that later. Yeah. Um, Playing it has been interesting. There's been some very obvious and massive niggles with it such as being in the fort in that you have about four to nine hours worth of dialogue to go through okay it is very much a talking simulator while you're on the fort yeah and i say talking simulator because that's exactly how it feels it it doesn't feel fluid and it doesn't feel like anyone's having a conversation well, no, sorry. The people in the fort talking to each other sound like they're having a conversation. When you walk up to someone who's got an icon over their head to say that they want to talk to you, you walk up to them and it doesn't feel like what you expect from a Bioware game when you go up to a chat to someone. You play a Bioware game, you expect it the conversation to be like a cutscene yeah. that you select what it is that you want to say. In this... 
it's for, on the fort, you're, it's in first person. You have a person standing in front of you. As you walk up to them, they light up slightly. Okay. As if they, you know that they want to talk to you. And they talk at you. Yeah. And then you get one of two, you get two options to say what you want back to them. And nine times out of ten, those two options are so very, very similar that it doesn't matter which one you pick, whether it's left or right. It's And it's not even like a left is the funny option, right's the um, serious option, or left is the good option, right's the bad option. It's both options are there, and then you can just say whichever one you feel like because it doesn't affect the game in more or less in any way. I've had times when there's an, an old woman who thinks that you're her son, and you walk up to her, and she asks, talks to you as if you're her son. And I said to her, I'm not your son, your son died. And then, All right. and then I go off and do a mission and come back, and she wants to talk to me again and treats me like I'm her son still. Okay. As if she's completely forgotten the fact that I've just told her that her son's dead, and I'm not her son. It's entirely possible that that's what the story is supposed to do because she's a fucking mental case and yeah. her son died 10 years ago while he was still a child. But yeah, there's, there's, there's the possibility that she's a bit uh, not all there. Yeah. <laughs> as, as you go through it, she talks to you as if to say, oh, you remind me of my son. You've got the same jawline for the start. And then the next time it's the next time you talk to her, I say, oh, you're her son. You've put on a bit of weight. <laughs> well, of course I've put on a bit of fucking weight. It's been 10 years. I'm not a child. <laughs> wow. Uh. See, so I've read mostly negative stuff about Anthem. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, for the most part, the, the, uh, the stuff that gets signal boosted a lot tends to be the, uh, the negative shit, because everybody needs to be negative. Yep. We're, uh, we're in a world of entirely negative people. Yeah. But... Uh, one of the guys who writes for Set the Tape wrote a review slash preview type thing. He based it all on his experience on PC uh, during the Origin... Premier Week. Premier Week. No, it's still Origin Standard. Okay. He's still only got his regular old 10 hours. Okay. I'll admit, I wouldn't have reviewed a game that big based on a 10-hour trial? No. But... Well, you, you can't really play much of the game in 10 hours. Not without missing massive chunks. You could finish no. the story in about 10 hours, probably. Well, you can't, because from what I gather, and this isn't from him, you get about, you know, halfway through, and you hit a massive fucking brick wall where you have to do five, six hours worth of challenge grinding before the story lets you continue. I wouldn't say it's about five, six hours worth of challenge grinding unless he's really fucking shit. No, no, it wasn't him that said that. This was something I read oh. somewhere else. Uh, but again, in a particular subreddit where pretty much everybody is negative about everything EA. So, you know, I take yep. it with a pinch of salt. But I don't know. Even the people that are trying to be positive about it seem to be struggling to find good things to say about Anthem. Uh, what's, that's the thing is that everyone looks at it and they compare it against something else so this is very close to being what uh, Destiny was from the go Okay. so it's not a finished game and it doesn't feel finished it feels like there's still a lot more content to be drip fed to us in the new world of we're going to drip feed content and make it seem like it's we're giving you something good instead of holding stuff back well it, it is a live service game isn't it yeah so, I, I am kind of forgiving. Maybe is the wrong word, but I I understand the point to it. But they've only released they've released a roadmap, haven't they, for like the next ninety days? Yeah. So, are they expecting after ninety days for it to not be applicable anymore? Is that going to be all of the content? I maybe after ninety days they'll go. Oh, by the way, we've now got the next bit of content that we're pushing out for it yeah. and then and then 90 days later it's another bit of content so they're going to drip feed actual content updates fair enough if you look at the bioware studio that's looking after the uh, the old republic on p uh, mmo yeah that's still getting content every so often 
it's not particularly large content, and the problem is is that MMOs have to go up against World of Warcraft. Yeah. And at the moment, World of Warcraft has what? How much fucking content? Mol- just, how many years worth of fucking content? But yeah, true. If you were to fire up World of Warcraft right now and decide to start playing it, you could probably spend the best part of the rest of the year playing your way through the fucking game. Yeah. So uh, unlike unlike new expansions that come to it, where you've already finished everything and you've got everything, they release a new expansion, then you just spend the next forty eight hours and you finished it. Yeah. But it's interesting that you bring up World of Warcraft because obviously, like EA tried to recreate the World of Warcraft bubble with the Old Republic. Yep. Is it the Old Republic? Yeah. Yep. Uh, and to be honest, failed miserably. Yes. Like it did, really didn't take miserably. very long to go for free to play. No, that, that went free to play within about a year. Maybe a bit longer than a year. But, I know. I, and I played it while it was free to play. I also paid when it went free to play. I think I paid for a month up uh, on it just so I could play it properly instead of being limited to the free to play content yeah. which is not a lot no but then obviously so they've done that was bioware as well wasn't it that made that yeah yeah so now ea have tasked bioware with making destiny yep you know and there's no two ways about that as much as ea will never admit it out loud what ea want is destiny they want destiny levels of success destiny levels of money uh have they made Destiny? Have they? Can they match Destiny? Uh, is, is Anthem going to drag Destiny players away to play Anthem for the next year? So I don't think it's going to drag Destiny players away, mainly because Destiny players are still playing Destiny and won't move away from it. However, what they might pick up are the people who played Destiny 2 and decided that it was so not good compared to how Destiny 1 ended that they needed a new game. And there is... uh, So the Anthem subreddit itself does have a fair few people who are former Destiny players. And there's a lot of people out there who are playing this because it's more or less exactly what they need right now. They want a co-op-based shooter where it feels fun okay which it does it's not it's not borderlands fun (laughs) but no game can be no you you can't make a competitor to borderlands there there is no competitor to borderlands but this is as close to the birth the the love child of mass effect and destiny as you can get Without being either. Okay. There's a loot system for killing enemies, okay. which is has been patched and repatched since launch. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm not too worried about it. the loot systems always get patched. Yeah. Always. I mean, I think yeah. that there should be a day where we at least get a game on day one, and the loot system is at least kind of okay. Because we have enough shoot and loot games now that someone should be able to get it at least somewhere close to right on yeah. day one. Uh, but again, it's a live service game, so I, 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 I'm not going to piss all over it. I haven't played it either, so I can't piss all over it that much. I won't be playing Anthem because it's not my kind of game. No, and I don't expect it to be your kind <clears> of game. <throat> uh, one thing I do find quite amusing is that there are difficulties for every mission. So you can pick uh, each mission when you go to load it up. You can pick easy, you can pick normal, you can pick hard. There's three other difficulties, Grandmaster 1, 2, and 3, which are locked until you hit level 30, which I'm thinking is the cap. Okay. I don't know if 30 is the cap. I've not got there yet. I'm twenty level 29. Fair enough. Also finish the main critical path. Um, and i still got a lot more content to play and do. Uh, biggest gripe that a fair few people have had is that there isn't a lot of post game um, can't think of the right word reward there isn't enough reward for finishing the game and carrying on playing fair enough that's 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 a loot issue that's a there's a there are so 
there's something like 46 achievements. Yeah. And those achievements can be as easy as finishing missions or finishing mission arcs. So every every mission is usually tied to anywhere between three and six missions where you just continue with the small arc of the of that story. Yeah. Uh, and it's you play that, and then there's other ones which are you've completed rank one of all of the guns for this gun class. Rank one being fifty kills. Yeah. Every gun class has three weapons, so you just need to get fifty kills with each weapon, and you get an achievement for that class. There's, I want to say, ten weapon classes. It's uh, auto cannons, which are like a mini gun, which is Colossus exclusive. Grenade launchers. Uh, LMGs, marksman rifles, auto rifles, two types of pistol, machine and heavy, sniper rifles. I think that might be it, actually. Okay. Uh, but there's one glaring issue that I've noticed when since playing it and using some of the guns. There's a burst fire marksman rifle, which is fucking awesome because it's a marksman rifle power and it's burst fire. Three rounds of marksman rifle rounds is pretty fucking good. But there's also a burst fire auto rifle. Right. So it's exactly the same situation where it's auto rifle power in burst mode. Can you see where the problem is here? You've got a burst scout rifle and a burst auto rifle. Yeah. The scout rifle is considerably better than the auto rifle to the point where <laughs> anyone would why anyone would pick the auto rifle variant is completely mental. Fair enough. It's not like it even has more ammo because it doesn't. No. I think they've both got the same amount of ammo but in, and they're both burst fire weapons but one will kill an enemy in one pull of the trigger and the other one will not. <laughs> yeah, that that's, that's a balancing issue that needs to be patched. Uh... As a whole, I think because the class that I play is the Colossus class, which is the essentially the tank class, it's taken a fair amount of learning to work out how to play it because you expect the tank class to be run in, shoot everything, barely take any damage, and then run away. Yeah. Uh, for the, it's actually more of a you sit and play artillery. So you've got a lot, you can take a fuck ton of damage. But that is more of a you've just run or you stand on the edge of the combat, you fire mortar shots in, you fire a railgun, and you just lay waste to everything with a big fucking L, uh, either an LMG or a minigun. When you start to run out of ammo, you equip your shield, which is a physical shield in front of you, and you just sprint at the enemies and just yeah. pick the ammo up off the floor. <laughs> or I think a personal favorite of mine since learning how since learning it is that. Some of the enemies sort of hover in the air. Yeah. So I've taken to jumping, putting my shield on, and then flying directly at them and knocking them out of the sky. Fair enough. So, yeah, the the Colossus is fucking brilliant to play as if you're, if you're good at having fun with playing characters really fucking weird. Okay. <laughs> So, as per normal, Lee has picked the the magic guy, the yeah. storm class, the one that's mostly elemental stuff. So he tends to get a lot of kills based on uh, priming and detonating targets rather than using his guns. And uh, Buddy Ben plays the interceptor, which is more of a run in, stab everything and run away like a crazed bee. Yeah. Uh, so I'm there just mowing everything down. Or in most cases, pulling out a flamethrower and just setting fire to everything. Fair enough. That sounds like a game I can get behind. Yeah. So the Colossus has uh, a firewall mortar, which is exactly how it sounds. It's a mortar that just is essentially just leaves napalm and just like everything is on fire for a good few seconds. Okay. Uh, and a flamethrower at the same time. <laughs> so you just fire everywhere, all the things. I've done that more than once, where I've just gone into an area of massive crowd of enemies and just gone, there's not enough fire over here, and just burn everything to the ground. 
So yeah, I've uh, I've enjoyed playing Anthem so far. It's more fun playing with friends than it is on your own, but that's eighty percent of multiplayer games. Yeah. Literally, you couldn't name a multiplayer game where it's not more fun to play with friends than just in general randoms. This is very true. Like even playing Hitman Ghost mode would be more fun with friends than randoms. Well, if some if any of my fucking friends would d- decide to get their asses into gear and play some goddamn Hitman. I could play some fucking ghost mode because ghost mode yep. with randoms sucks. Yeah. I've not managed to complete a single fucking game yet because every twat rage quits. <laughs> it's bugging the pit. I don't even care about the challenges and that. I just like the, the idea of ghost mode and want to play it for a bit, but can't yep. because people are dicks. Yes, they are. Uh. So what have you what have you played, Brooks? Uh where shall I start? Where shall I start? Where shall I start? I played Crackdown three. Mate. Uh okay. have you played Crackdown three yet? No, I probably won't ever play Crackdown Three. Don't play Crackdown Three. It is the biggest load of balls I've played so far this year. And I'm including a game that I'm gonna talk about in a little while as well. Like this I don't get it. I don't. Who is this game for? I do not understand it. It's it's Agents of Mayhem, but not as fun. You mean it's it's actually just the next Crackdown game, but not as fun? Well, I've not played a Crackdown game before. Okay, the Crackdown games are just Agents of Mayhem, or rather, Agents of Mayhem is just Crackdown. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. The problem is, I was bored really quickly. Now, I shouldn't be bored when I have a massive open world that I can run around and shoot shit in and, and jump all over the shop and climb upside of buildings and just fuck everything up. I do, and I can do all this as Terry goddamn Cruz. Yeah. And yet, I was bored. I mate, I didn't last three hours. Three hours off of game, and I turned it off and uninstalled it. I so you basically you play as a as whoever you want, but obviously I chose Terry Crews because Terry Crews is Terry Crews. You choose Terry Crews, and it starts off with him just kind of yelling at a bunch of recruits about how badass he is and shit like that, and then. He gets almost killed. And when he gets almost killed, obviously all of his powers are gone. So there's your uh, there's your reset moment for the game. Right. So now you are weakling Terry Crews, which as we all know is still stronger than most people. I was going to say, there's no such thing as weak Terry, Terry Crews. But now I have to kind of walk around this this newly created city uh, and start just basically it's a selection of side missions right so, so you have to uh, there's there's kind of like a, a, a hierarchy pyramid thing if you like so you need to <clears throat> you need to do a bunch of shit to get out you know to to, op- to get a boss come to become vulnerable and you go and kill that boss, and then you move on, and up the chain you go. And you need to do this, obviously, at like the bottom, there's like two or three, or three or four bosses, and then you can move on to the next tier, and then move on to the next tier, and then move on to the person that created the company that owns the island that you're on. So, for example, to get one of the bosses out, you basically just have to go around and, and destroy or, or take over train stations. So it's go to train station, kill everybody at train station, kill big scary robot at train station, train station is now yours. This It's literally side missions over and over again. These story missions are that. You know, there's no actual proper story mission in this game. And I don't think it works. It's... I'll tell you what it reminded me of more than Agents of Mayhem, because at least Agents of Mayhem had some story missions. It reminded me more of Get Out of Hell. 
So, take away the whole futuristic thing, which is Agents of Mayhem. Did you play Get Out of Hell? Uh, no, I never got around to it. So, Get Out of Hell was just a or yeah, a Saints Row map with a bunch of the typical Saints Row side missions on, and they were your story missions. And that's okay. how, that's how it felt playing playing Crackdown Three. Uh, traversal seemed not good so you'd try and climb up the side of a building and you can't tell what you can grab hold of and what you can't so you'd get halfway up a building and suddenly you can't go any further so oh, but, but there's another ledge no it's just just a drawing you can't do that it's it's not fun it's not entertaining I really wanted it to be good uh, I was really quite looking forward to playing it. No, I'm glad I've uninstalled it. <laughs> that's my yeah. that's, that's that's my whole opinion on Crackdown Three. Don't just don't bother. I didn't plan on bothering. I I think I think I'm in the boat of so many other people when they look at Crackdown Three and gone, this game has taken so long to develop because they're spending so much time working on the background. Yeah. So they're trying to work on everything that is not the actual game. They want to build an an entire generation of new content yeah. delivery in terms of video games, which is the, the Xbox Cloud. Yeah, so so all of that experience. all of that destruction, all of that world destruction that they talk about, that's actually the multiplayer component. All that yeah. is cloud powered. Yep. Uh, I don't know if it's any good because no one I know was playing it, so I couldn't play with anybody. So I didn't. Yep. I had no interest in doing it with randoms. So I wanted to do it with mates, and none of my mates were playing it. Uh, and the, I got Tom from Jump Cut. Uh, I told him, because he, he wanted to play it, I was like, well, it's, it's, it's Game Pass is two quid for two months. For two quid, you can go and play Crackdown 3. So he did, and he gave up a bit quicker than I did. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, it, it just don't bother. It's, it's a complete waste of time. It's a, I'm, I'm sure the developers were trying to make something, you know, really good. I just, I think they missed the mark, and I was bored. And honestly, it just made me want to download and play Saints Row 4. Yeah. Well, it does scream heavily of we're trying to build a game on technology that doesn't exist yet. And then when the technology did come around to build it, it was too late. No in one the cycle, was interested anymore. And no one was interested. So they, they rushed the game out. I Part of me feels like it's the opposite of what happened with Scalebound, where it was that they spent too long building it. It was no longer commercially viable to release the game because it just wouldn't make them any money anymore. There was no profit left to be had, so we, they mothballed it and that was done. Yeah. With Crackdown, I feel like it was a, we were going to build this game, and then turns out that we can't build this game because the ability to build it doesn't exist yet. When the, the ability to build it finally came around, when they everything fell into place, they'd spoken about it for too long, and then they were stuck with releasing a game that nobody was interested in that had barely been touched in seven years worth of talking about it. Yeah. And the studio just looked at it as if to say, well, if we focus entire, our entire efforts into the multiplayer aspect to it, no one, no one even plays single player stuff anymore. No, no. So, uh, yeah, I mean, at the end of that, I wouldn't, wouldn't bother with, with Crackdown yeah. 3. So Crackdown 2 wasn't as good as Crackdown 1. <clears throat> I still, and I I know I'm, I don't think I'm in a minority, but I'm definitely in a minority when it comes to screaming about it. I will take Saints Row over any of these games. I just, I didn't like GTA, I prefer Saints Row. I don't like Crackdown. I prefer Saints Row. Please, God, someone give me Saints Row 5. Like, proper Saints Row 5. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> uh, but we've spoken it. That's that's more time than Crackdown deserves. What I've, what the time we've spent talking about it now. So, mate, talk about something else. What, what else have you been playing? So, um, for you, Brooks, I will say this: I 
been playing Hitman 2. God damn motherfucking finally. <laughs> Are you finding it? Uh, so I've actually technically been playing Hitman 1. You get legacy I've, pack I've, for it, yeah? So I've got the legacy pack. Good man. Because I never really finished Hitman 1. And now I remember why I never really finished Hitman 1. Why? Because I'm on the Colorado mission. Which one's Colorado? Colorado mission's fucking hard. Uh, is that the one with the house in the middle of the kind of... Yeah, in uh, the compound. You've got four targets <clears throat> in the compound. The entirely hostile compound. It is tough. Uh, is it bad that I can probably give you a hint to get the easiest walkthrough for that game? Probably. I, I know Colorado quite well. Go for. I can't remember the guy's name, but they've got like a they've got a guy. His name's like Alpha or something. So he's he's near the back of the compound, and there's a guy, a special ops guy in a balaclava. And he's allowed pretty much everywhere. Okay, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I already know about that one. I know about him. I've done. The, I did the mission story to find him. Mm -hmm. uh, and I completed that mission story where I killed the woman using oh, that. If you wait, you can kill two of them at the same time. Yeah, I kind of wish I'd noticed because I saw her standing there in the exact position, and I saw him. I was like, "Is he close enough? I think he is." And I pressed the button, and then she died, and he didn't. I was like, well, shit. I walked off. Yeah. And then I walked to another area, and I was like, uh, loads of people were like, looking at me as if to say, hey, this is the guy that just did that. I was like, hang on, you didn't see me do anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's the character to do it as. There's, uh, that's, that's... The last mission is tough, but that's probably the, the Colorado one is probably the hardest one. The last, the yeah. last mission is quite tough. So I've almost done all of the mission, all of the yeah, the mission stories for that. So I have done the uh, OCD thing. Yeah. Um, I've done the killing the woman with the hydraulic ram. I've yeah. pushed the woman in the cesspool, in the slurry pit rather. Yeah. Uh, I've done the the overdose to the guy in the un, in the ba basement. Yeah. The only one I haven't done, I think, is the nitroglycerin. Okay, yeah. Bombs. And that's because I'm really struggling to get the suit of one of the bomb makers. Yeah. Because then none of them go anywhere near a position where they're not visible to someone else. That no, I can the, actually some do of them, so I haven't sometimes. done it on Hitman 2, so I can't remember it. Uh, I think I did it on the first one. But yeah, the, there are some of them you have to kind of set everything up like start distracting people and setting off alarms and <clears throat> and all that kind of shit some of them can get quite complicated yeah so I think there was one of them that I did like this I really I planned it out brilliantly and I did a double distraction on one guy yeah so I put a gun on the floor in a position where he would see it turned off a generator so he'd go and investigate the generator see the gun and then yeah. pick the gun up and go fuck off with it to uh, the nearest case to put it in. And the nearest yeah. case was where I was kind of standing around waiting after having taken out the two guys that were in the room. Yeah. With where the case was. I just waited for him to come to me. Fair enough. So it has literally just like spent ages just trying to get this guy to be nowhere near anyone. So I, I walked up to him and I was about to take him down. And I just looked around. And I was like, hang on a sec. There's like 17 people standing around here. One of them's going to see me do this, for yeah. fuck's sake. But it's completely open. To the point where I actually got to a, where I was actually thinking, I could just wear a fucking militant suit and then stand somewhere. And then when people aren't watching, just shoot them all in the head as they walk past. <laughs> yeah. I, I have to admit, I have made quite the effort to not get into gunfights in Hitman 1 and 2. The shooting in Hitman 1 and 2 is pretty bad. Yeah. So if you have to do it to more than one person silently, you're not coming out of that okay. It is quite the... Uh, it's, it's quite challenging if you have to do that. Actually, I think my biggest gripe with Hitman at the moment is that I'm on doing this Colorado mission. I think the furthest I've gotten into it, and I've got two kills 
out of four so far. Yeah. And I just remembered that I accidentally killed someone at the start. I pressed X and snapped his neck instead of B to drag him to the nearby dumpster. Yeah. The the auto save in Hitman is okay. So if you're playing on professional or whatever the easy one is, it regularly auto saves. So if you forget yeah. to do a bit of save point abuse and you fuck it up, you usually won't have to do too much uh, to fix it. But See, I've have... not really, I've not really been doing save point abuse on it. I've kind of, if I fuck up, I hit restart mission instead. Yeah, and that, right that Colorado, option. that Colorado mission is a long fucking mission. If you want to do it perfectly, you, if you get two thirds of the way through that and you fuck it up, I'm reloading a save. I'm not restarting the goddamn mission. Yeah, I think I'll do that <clears throat> on this one from now on because I think, yeah, it's really fucking hard and to the point where. I've, I think I've restarted it so many times now, right from the start after having completed most of it. It's like I said, I think I've only got one of the mission stories left, and that's the nitroglycerin stuff. Yeah. I still need to go back through, and I still need to do a lot of the mission stories on a lot of the the well, a lot of the missions, the Hitman 1 ones and the, the Hitman 2 ones. But I'm going through, I'm doing some, I've, I've done one of the Hitman 2 missions on Master Difficulty the other day. Tried to do it suit only. I think they call it sniper assassin. So, right. So suit only. You don't get seen by anybody, or you don't get you don't get noticed, uh, and all of your kills are with a sniper rifle. So this is a whole new fucking challenge for me. Uh, it's kind of difficult. I really enjoy so far from the of Hitman what I played. I really enjoy Sapienza still. Sapiens is a great map. Uh, there are a couple of very good maps in Hitman 2. Uh, actually, one of my favourite ones is the Prologue mission. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny map. You've only got one target, and the mission's 20 minutes. But it's a really good map. Uh, and actually, Friday, the uh, there's a new elusive target, and it's going to be on that map. <laughs> awesome. uh, and I'm quite excited to see what it, what it's going to be and how it's going to play out. Because actually, because I've now unlocked a si- my silenced sniper rifle, uh, I might just hide in the bush and do the kill from miles away and run and see what happens. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. But yeah, uh, I'm glad you're playing Hitman. The Hitman 1 in Hitman 2. Uh, yeah, I'm tr- I'm trying really hard to play it. It's like every any time I've got a break in playing any of the games that I've got. Yeah. It's like I'm playing Hitman and I think I came home from work today and I started playing it and between getting home from work, chatting to the guys about the Gigafast stuff, coming on to record this, that's about what, four hours? Yeah. I'm still doing the Colorado mission. <laughs> And I put about an hour and a half into it on Sunday as well, trying to do the Colorado mission. So, I'm, yeah, I think I think that's probably my favorite part about Hitman is that despite the fact there's only about what five to six missions. Oh yeah, there's not in much. Each of the games. Yeah, there's not much to them. But they're fucking long to yeah. try and do them right. Yeah. Because you, if you were really, if you really didn't care about the game, you just wanted to do the fucking mission and finish the story, you could easily just walk in. Fuck everyone else. Pull out a shotgun and just go. Yep, bored of this. Thump. And just knock everything down. I've got the silenced shotgun now. What did I do? I done. I can't remember what mission it was, but I did go through. I I done the suit only silent assassin on one of them, and I was in it. I was only in the mission for about twenty minutes, but that's only because I knew exactly where I was going and what I was doing. I was like, right, I'm gonna fucking do this, and I'm just gonna see what happens. But mainly because I know the missions quite well now because I keep playing them. The disc's yeah. still in my machine. I've played three games that I'm going to talk about, four games maybe, that I'm going to talk about in this episode. Uh, and I haven't had to change the disc for any of them. It's been great. Hitman yeah. stays in the machine all the time. See, my Hitman's digital, so I'm quite content with that. Yeah, see, I will, when it goes on sale, I will possibly pick it up digitally just so I can leave it installed and I can play other things. Yeah. Uh, did you get the sniper assassin level 
Yes, I think yeah. I've got. I think I've got the whole of the content, digital content. Because you can do that in multiplayer as well. In co-op, Ooh. you can co-op sniper assassin. So you'll have to give me a shout next time you're on, and I will come and do some co-op sniper assassin with you. So I'm pretty sure it's possible to do all of the Hitman One missions, or at least most of the Hitman One missions involve killing the targets with a sniper rifle. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just trying to think where I can do it on uh, on Colorado with a sniper rifle. <laughs> uh, so near the if you've got a sniper rifle, yeah, <clears throat> near the beginning as you go into the compound and kind of go towards, I don't know what would be the left hand side of the map as you're looking at it. Yeah, there's a water tower. Oh, okay, you go up there. Uh, there's Can actually. If uh, you got the if you've done the if you've got the legacy pack, have you got the patient zero stuff? Yes. So there's a co- there's a mission that happens in Colorado, uh, in Patient Zero, that yep. is basically sniper assassin. You can't right. move from that water tower. So you do the entire mission from that water tower with a sniper rifle. Cool. Yeah, because uh, I'm trying to think. Like Sapienza, for instance, you can go. There's a fort tower. Yeah. To climb. Um, what's it? The one in Thailand. Mm-hmm. You just go up to the up to the roof of the building. Yeah. The the queen suite and just wait for one of the targets to walk directly in front of you. Yep. I think the the other one is you do it from the other side. Yeah. So, two challenges on that one. Yeah. And Paris is there's a bridge and you just wait for the fireworks to go off. Uh yeah, you cl- you climb up a you can climb up a thing like a boat with a scaffolding on it in Paris. At the back, yeah, that's re- that's a good spot actually. Well, because there was a challenge. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming it's still in Hitman Two. I did it on Hitman One, so I didn't bother doing it. So you set the fireworks off, and both targets will come out. Yeah, uh, and you have to kill them both with a sniper rifle within ten seconds of each other. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I know the I know the challenge. Yeah. I tried it, and I just <clears throat> gave up. It is tough. You you do have to get your timing pretty perfect, but this is where save point abuse comes in. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I'm glad you're playing it. Uh, it does. My only gripe about Hitman Two is they don't keep up with the quality of the cutscenes between missions. Oh, okay. Which is a shame. But I'll. I'm not going to say any more. I'll leave that until you. Until you get there. If you get there. I will at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what should I talk about now? I tell you what, I'm not going to talk about Killzone Two. Oh, okay. I'll leave that. I might finish it before I talk about it. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so I will instead talk about Onrush. I played Onrush. So because I've got Game Pass on the Xbox, I literally went through the other day and I was going, oh, what, "What can I play? What can I play?" No, it's like. Uh, Return to Ar- Batman Return to Arkham is now on Game Pass so it's like result because I've been wanting to replay Arkham Asylum for a while so I uh, I downloaded that uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is on there now so I've downloaded that yeah. and that's what Onrush I was like I heard Colm and Justin on Last Save Loaded talking about Onrush I was like I've got to give this shit a go this, sound, this looks cool and it is basically uh it's kind of like the takedown missions in Burnout Paradise, but much more mental. Uh, actually, I suppose it's closer to like Split Second. Do you remember Split Second? Yeah, I remember Split Second. The racing game where you just kind of take down the people you're racing against and also blow up buildings to redo the landscape. Yeah. Well, there's no blowing up buildings in Onrush, but... What you get is you're given a car or a bike or whatever and you are dumped on a track and you don't win the race by winning the race. You win the race by scoring points which you score by burning boost which you earn by wrecking people. It's quite, it's much simpler than I'm making it sound. Yes. But it is very simple. 
Uh, and then when you've burnt, when you've built up enough boost, uh, not sorry, not built up. When you've burnt off enough boost, so you get bonus stuff for burning off more boost. Once you burn off your boost and you got like a hundred percent, and you set off rush mode, and every car does a different thing for rush mode, but it's basically super destructive, super fast driving. It's silly arcade destruction derby burnout thing mate it's great if you've got game pass you can do much much worse than downloading this game it is so much fun i kept like playing i kept like playing batman and play kill zone and <clears throat> i play crackdown i'm thinking I'm, i don't want to play any of these i want to play fucking onrush because i just want to drive around and fuck other people up <laughs> this is great uh, it will wear out its its welcome quite quick, but yeah, it, I really, really liked it. Uh, I was talking to Colm about it at the weekend as well, and even he was saying it, it's just such good fun. It re- I really, really enjoyed it, and I can't recommend Onrush enough to anybody. But yeah, oh. I, I don't, I don't have much else to say. Just, I tried Grip as well. Do you remember Grip? This the stupid multi-directional racer thing that we tried at EGX Res. Oh yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Which so you basically you're you're a, a flat racing car that you drive and then you go you know you flip over and then oh no you're on your roof but oh it's okay because you can drive on your roof as well. Yep. Yeah, I had that installed for about ten minutes. <laughs> Not fun. No, it's crap. Got it. <laughs> I actually was on the same track that we were playing it on at EGX. I was like, I remember this being much more fun. I'm going to go back and play on Rush. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Go on, mate. Have you been playing anything else? I have. Uh, (laughs) And this is going to be a very, 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 very brief. I played um, GTA Online over the weekend. Okay. For one reason and one reason only um, that there was a glitch in the game uh, that meant that you could make approximately one thousand dollars every two seconds okay yeah nice. um, it essentially was that if you were inside a garage like you can be inside one of your cars yeah. And you phone up Lester to source you a vehicle. Yeah. A vehicle could be uh, an aeroplane for this, uh, the example on this, and it costs you $1,000 yeah. to water it. But if you were to press the A button and the right trigger at the same time, to lead, uh, if you press the right trigger when you're inside a car, you drive out of the garage. If you press them both at the same time, it searches for the plane at the same time as also fails to find it. But the game doesn't then not keep searching for it. So if it can't find it, it refunds you a thousand. Okay. If you drive to the location where the plane is, it will refund you and it will keep searching and not being able to find it and keep refunding you every two seconds. Okay. So essentially, I think the only reason I went on to GTA was because they were doing a special offer of if you play over a week over the weekends in February for each weekend you got two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Nice. It was just like a, a reward for playing um, over the weekends in February, so it was quite nice. Quite a nice reward, I'm like because money is well, money on that yeah. game is fucking ridiculous. How expensive everything is now. Yeah. Like if you were going in game into the game new. There's a reason to why they have a criminal enterprise starter pack, which gives you one of each of the businesses right from the go, because yeah. it's too fucking expensive to just start <laughs> the game up now. As yeah. new, you do not, you can't earn money quick enough to pay for the stuff of how expensive everything is. Even okay. I struggle. I've got all the ability to make all of the money possible. Yeah. Even I struggle to make enough money to actually be able to buy whenever they've got something new come round. And. Hell. To iterate a point, the most expensive of the shark cards, I think it's like the eighty pound one, gives you something like either eight million or twelve million dollars. Yeah. I think it's only eight million dollars. 
Okay. That's not really enough to do a lot. When the most expensive yacht in the game, and the yachts are pretty much just a way of showing off your massive dick in game. Okay. Yeah. The yachts do fuck all. They literally are there for no reason whatsoever. You can't do anything with them. You just have a yacht on the side of the map. The most expensive variant costs ten million dollars. The cheapest variant costs six million dollars. Like I said, it's just there for big dick status. Yeah, I'm good. Not even remotely considering no. picking up GTA online. <laughs> So it's a combination of that and the fact that they put on a lovely uh, update to Red Dead Online, which has made the game considerably worse than it was before. Okay. So they they introduced challenges with uh, things like get a headshot kill three players in the yeah. lobby to try and like increase the amount of people killing each other. All right. So there's challenges have been increased like that. But they've also made it so that you only need to spend about two minutes away from the person you've just killed for it to be taking off of the map of them. So it's like uh, it's the parlay system, for instance. So if you kill someone, you show up as red on the map to them and their entire posse if they're in a posse. So if I was to if I was in a posse of eight people, you in a posse of eight people, if I killed you... Me yeah. and my entire posse would show up as red on the map to you and your entire posse. So you'd know exactly where we all are at all times. Okay. The new parlay system is that it's all of about two minutes of being not near you for it to then turn around and say, well, they've parlayed. They're no longer on the map anymore. Okay. So What's it's... What's the point? Yeah. It completely ruins the online they also have the one of the quickest ways of making money was hunting and fishing as opposed to doing missions and they've reduced the amount of money you make from selling hunting and fishing goods or hmm. fish and bits of meat so it wasn't particularly lucrative to start with it was at best i think about uh two dollars for a fish yeah. you can carry 10 at a time so at best you were making 20 dollars okay now it's uh, now it's less for the most expensive fish, and it's not like the fish were easy to get. Like you would go to a location where the fish would be, you'd throw the rod out. You wouldn't always guarantee a bite, and it wouldn't always be the fish that you want to catch. It would often be one of the other ones in the river. Yeah. Um, um, bounty hunters, you can't loot them anymore. So it's like if you end up with bounty hunters coming after you for killing too many people and the, the bounty comes after you, if you kill the bounty hunters, you can't loot them for the money anymore or guns or ammo or weapons or anything that you might find on them. So it completely makes them fucking annoying. Yeah. So you just spent your entire supply of ammo on killing all the bounty hunters chasing after you and you get nothing out of it. Okay. It, it seems like Red Dead has intentionally f try to force everyone to play in GTA again. Fair enough. Wow. I am so glad I am done with these games. Yeah. It's... I'm annoyed with Red Dead to the point where I took a look and it's like 110 gigabytes on my Xbox. Jesus. I'm deleting it soon. Yeah. Next next time I remember to go onto my Xbox into the my games and app stuff, I'm deleting Red Dead because I can't think of a time when I'm probably going to play it again. Bloody so. hell. The problem with that is as well, it's like you'll you'll you won't play even if you want to play it after you've deleted it, it's not a quick download, man. No. Well, until I get um gigabit internet. Yeah, but true. even then. There's still a lot of time to download 110 gigabytes, even on fucking gigabit internet. Yeah. Yeah, fucking... Yeah. So glad I gave up with that nice and early. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose I should finish this off then, shouldn't I? Yeah. Uh, so I played... Homefront 2. Again. Mm -hmm. Mate, Homefront 2 sucks. 
Oh. Home Front 2 is balls. Uh, but I had a bash on the co-op at the weekend. So I was playing with our good buddy Colm from the last Save Loaded podcast. Which was just fucking hilarious. It was so funny. Like, we were both equally dog shit at this game. I think that like the first time, and we're like, we're just going to play this on easy. This is just going to be a bit of fun. And like the first mission, we tried it like two or three times, and we just got completely fucked every time. Uh, we didn't even get past it. I think the first time, because <laughs> you get like a, a rating when you finish the mission, or when you both die if you don't finish the mission, it tells you how far through you got. It's like 0%. Like, oh, <laughs> okay. 0%, two kills. And one death, and you fucked it completely. Oh, okay. Uh, and we tried a couple of the other missions and, and done kind of the same. <laughs> and then we done a mission where you kind of got to, got to infiltrate a base and then rescue some prisoners and then uh, do some other stuff. And you've got to keep going into bases and getting and, and hacking shit and standard co op bollocks, just yeah. with really bad shooting. And, a, and an insane lack of ammo and no way of killing the fucking snipers that are taking pot shots at you because you ran out of ammo and all you've got left is a pistol and it, it might as well be throwing water balloons at these things. But it was such a laugh. Like, both of us just losing our shit because we can't figure out what we've got to do and now we've got no ammo and I'm basically running around well, we're both basically running around just kind of breaking the necks of people that we see because that's all we can do because no ammo. <laughs> it was really fun. Uh, <clears throat> and really frustrating as well because like the, the second or the last mission we did because we were both like, yeah, we need to fucking call it a night after this. This has just been a ridiculous waste of time. We, uh, we actually, we almost finished the mission. We got like seven of eight objectives done. And then I think... He got he was downed, or I was downed, or it doesn't matter. One of us went down, and then the other one couldn't get to the to them quick enough, and they got downed as well because we were busy trying to get to them to revive them and killing people, and it was just a complete ball, uh, complete balls up. It was so fun, but it is. It's like when you and I played Destiny together. It was like. This is why I want to play games online, so I can play with my mates and just lose my shit and have fun. Uh, and bless Colin, we've we've been threatening to play Homefront Two together for fucking ages, uh, and it just, just so happens to be on Game Pass, so we both installed it. Uh, and I I picked the character, and I look like Solid Snake from Metal Gear Solid. Uh, yeah, it was weird yeah it was good fun to play with Colum actually and I would happily do that again just because yeah we we did some shooting we had a laugh we had a chat you know sat talking about achievements for like 10 minutes for, just because we were just busy shooting shit and and not really needing to coordinate in the game so we were just talking it was a lot of fun I don't recommend Homefront 2 to anybody it's utter bollocks and it's actually quite a punishing <laughs> game as well. It's quite difficult. But I do recommend playing co-op with Colm. That, that I think, definitely counts. So play a co-op game with Colm, but don't make it home front because home front bad. Well, make it home front because it's funny, especially if you're like me or Colm or, as it turned out, you know, both of us <laughs> we just got really angry at the shit that was going wrong. It was very funny. I feel like there are so many other better games to play in co-op with prob- Colum and yourself. There probably are, but it was just because I I promised him I'd play it. And we'd, like I say, we'd both been threatening to play it together and it must be for about a year we'd been threatening to play this fucking game together. And we both just happened to have it installed and we're like, right, let's get this fucking thing done and let's just let's have a play. Uh, and I I managed to grab a couple of hours on Saturday where... Maya was doing school work because it was, it was the end of half term and she hasn't done any work all week so she needs to get some done. Nice. Yeah. Uh, but that, that's it, mate. That's all my my game playing 
more or less for the last couple of weeks. Yeah, um, yeah, about me done for game playing for the last couple of weeks. I'm trying to think what else have I played. Played anything else? Anthem, Hitman, GTA briefly this weekend. Time to wrap no. it up then. No, I don't think I played anything else. Fair enough. I tell you what, there may have you got. We'll, we'll wrap it up nice and quick. Have you got any recommendations for anyone listening? So I, I want to recommend one of the games on Game Pass, but I, I don't think it's actually this week's one. I think it's. I feel like it's the next one. Okay. Which is not 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 what I wanted to. Not really helpful in the slightest. Fair enough. Remember, I, so no, technically I don't have a recommendation. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. Fair enough. Well, I'll tell you what then. I will recommend uh, that game on Game Pass, actually. Batman Return to Arkham is on Game Pass, and I forgot how fun Arkham Asylum is. Yep. Now, it is just really fun. It's good. I'm, good. Not, I'm not doing anything big or special. I'm just, I've dropped it onto easy, and I'm just running through the story because I don't care. I've completed it once already. I don't need to do it again. But yeah, I like it a lot. And yeah, if, I don't know. To, I think it's quite new onto onto Game Pass. That's what I like to hear. Yeah, but yeah, that's it. That's my my recommendation, mate. Uh, I suppose. Uh, well, do you know, Rob, Republic Commando, Star Wars game is on Games of the Gold. Okay. Or backwards compatible stuff. It's not. It's not an outstanding game, but it's one of the better Star Wars games. Fair enough. Uh, I think that's us all done then, mate. Good. Nice. Uh, less than two hours, which is not bad, considering the last fucking episode, which was just brutal. Yeah. I think my voice still hurts from the last episode. Well, I'm, I can feel my voice going now. My throat is absolutely killing me from this goddamn cold that I got from the child. So I'm going to get us wrapped up. So, mate, until next time, where can people find you? So I am the John underscore CU on Twitter and Xbox Live as Long Dong Silver. Awesome. I am Brooker411 on Twitter and that's about it. Uh, and as a... As a team, as a pair, as a podcast, you can find us at Character Unlock on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook. That's probably about it. And we, yeah, there's a YouTube channel where you can find the podcast. I, we don't put videos up anymore though because it just takes too long. <laughs> I did. I was recording me and Colin playing Homefront Two, and I did consider if we'd have maybe completed the final mission. I might have just uploaded that just for a laugh, but we didn't, so I didn't. Uh, but, mate, that's it. We are done. I am going to go get another lem sip and another cup of coffee, and I'm going to edit this bad boy and go to bed. So, say goodbye to the lovely listener, John. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>